you perform and how you manage this experience will have a reflection on your capacity for not just potential promotion, but you holding your current standing in your company. That's a stressful situation. Is the situation differently stressful for someone who may be the only person of color on the team? I'm going to go with yes. Because they are also operating under a different set of social and cultural constructs that are contributing to their experience in a different way than there are for their white colleagues. And yet everybody is experiencing stress in the context, in the, in that example. Okay. And I'm, I'm really happy you said that because... And I really was joking when I said real stress versus fake stress. One no, of the you conversations, <laughs> no, I, no, I really was. One of the conversations I had with a dear friend of mine who was, um, she was getting her house remodeled, um, specifically her kitchen. And the contractor was giving her so much conflama, right? <laughs> the thing, appliances weren't being delivered properly. It was just a lot of stuff going on. And she was over it because she was also managing it from thousands of miles away at that point. Mm. Um, and so she's talking to me about it. And then she takes a moment and she goes, I'm so sorry. You know, you're, you're dealing with things with your mother and this and that. And here I am bringing this up. And I said to her, don't you ever do that. Just because it's not an experience that I can relate to doesn't mean it's meaningful to you. We can have different experiences, yet still experience stress, mm -hmm. loss, pain. And who am I? Because I sit here and say, oh, that's frivolous. It's just a kitchen. That, that, may, that may be how I feel. But the reality is that's not your truth. And she was so appreciative of that. And we really sat down and we had a, a deeper conversation about as we sit down in this world and we talk about being change agents and being there and supporting each other. One of the first things you must do is acknowledge the fact that just because someone else's experience is different from yours, it doesn't invalidate their experience. Mm -hmm. By extension, that white colleague and that black colleague both are experiencing stress in different ways. It doesn't negate those individual personal experiences. And if we really want to surround ourselves as we're doing our self-care, just to go back to your point of having people making those boundaries of people mm -hmm. in terms of your self-care, I think one of those revolutionary acts of self-care is aligning yourself with people who understand that concept. They may right. not be going through what you're going through, but they'll still support you regardless and limiting your interaction with people who don't because they will add to that stress. And for some people, that's easier said than done, because sometimes people living with the people that does that don't validate their experience mm -hmm. around stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel. The Negro spiritual coming on. That right? hit you in your that hit you in your solar plexus right there. That hit you right in your heart. I mean, you just touched that me one. deep. I want I like I really want to break out to gonna lay down my burdens <laughs> down by the riverside. You know, it's just I'm just feeling really it good. so much because that's so that's true. Good. It's so true. It's, I have, uh, I have, yeah. I have friends who are in relation with people who are supposed to be their partner for life, you know, and mm -hmm. they should be the person in theory who should support them the most, but they are in essence, the people who bring them the greatest stress. And mm. so I sit back and I look at that and I say, well, why do you stay with that person? Why are you still dealing with that person? And when the person goes, well, because, you know, I love him or I love her. What do you say to that outside of, I support you. I'm, I'm here any way I can. How do you deal with that? Well, when it, like when that happens to me, what I say is, uh, with genuine empathy, I'm so sad that you are in that experience. That's got to be awful for you to continue to be in that experience. It's 
it's a really tough experience. Always keep a referral for therapy as well. And I think that that is a highly underutilized tool that we have in our society that people for a variety of different reasons and stigmas um, and stereotypes and assumptions about don't take advantage of. That some things are not, no, I'm going to say this, that a good deal of the important human experiences are not cut and dry. And that a lot of times you can benefit from having somebody that is objective and skilled talk to you and talk with you, talk you through certain experiences. And maybe it's not that you have to leave the relationship. Maybe it's how you engage the relationship in a different way. Yeah. Maybe it's how you hold yourself accountable for your part in the relationship that's right. different. Right. I think that's that's a fear that a lot of people, when you say to them that um, this relationship, dare I use the word toxic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes people hear, oh, I need to leave this person alone. It, it may not necessarily mean that. It may mean, you know, as you stated, sort of looking at things a different way, interacting in a different way and addressing the toxicity and seeing if there is something that can be done to really shift that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's it is hard. It is hard. I want to. Yeah. And for me, I want to go back to this other point that I want to talk a little bit more about. And it's this idea of self-compassion. Yes. You were talking earlier about how. You know, people that probably see you in the street would say, oh, you know, Tomas is this joyful, wonderful, happy human being. Uh, and that you're like, because you were, you show gen- genuine interest and you say, how are things going for you? And congratulations for you on that thing. What I find is that people aren't oftentimes able to do that for themselves. It becomes really easy to give accolades and ch- be a cheerleader for and praise other folks in our lives, it becomes easier to say, you know, I see you having a hard time, but I see you doing your best, even though you're struggling to those you outside really of want ourselves. You me to just break into some Negro spirituals, like the <laughs> whole show is just going to be me humming, rocking and singing in the background. Because <laughs> the truth you are bringing, I mean, that's so many people experience. It's, you know? it's what I know to be true. And right. we don't caregivers, take the time. Just caregivers. Take yes. care of everyone else because you're not taking that time to take care of yourself. Right? And we don't do it for right. ourselves. Right. The same, the literally the same things that we would tell a friend or spouse or sibling or whoever in the same situation, we struggle with turning that around and being able to give ourselves that same level of care and grace. Don't you have me up in here pulling off my shoes like Patti LaBelle on concert. Don't you have me doing it. Okay. I'm being serious. We don't. I don't. I don't know how that disconnect happens for us. And I don't know when it happens and I don't know how we get lulled into thinking that we can't love ourselves in that way. And I mean, and when I say love, I mean love in like a, in, in the verb sense that right, we can't right. take care of ourselves in that way. And that somehow being self-critical, that somehow being um, uh, self-sacrificing will get us further, give, give us more than being able to take the time to really say to ourselves, you are doing your absolute best and it's still not enough. But you are doing great at doing what you can. You know, it's it's so funny you say that because, um, shameless plug, I had <laughs> about, hashtag shameless plug hashtag shameless <laughs> plug. No, I had about <laughs> ten years ago a fan <laughs> <laughs> on MySpace. <laughs> Here we go again with the MySpace. I keeps it old school. Don't you begrudge me the old school. No, but seriously, 10 years ago, a fan of mine in MySpace hit me up and said to me that he was so moved by my music and he was waiting for me to drop another album. And he, you know, thanked me for being so honest and open and just being myself and how my music really changed his life and helped him through some things. And I genuinely took that to heart. I was genuinely appreciative and I corresponded with him. And actually, you know, the funny thing is we still speak with each other today via Facebook. We've, we've, 
quote, leveled what, up. You, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've leveled up to Wonderful. Facebook. But really, really great guy. He's in a relationship now. And I'm really, really happy for him and all that he's going through. Um, but fast forward a couple of years ago, I put on my first album just listening to it and said to myself, well, damn, I should have listened to this earlier because now I see what he was talking about. I was really saying some things that <laughs> had I listened to what I was saying, right? Right. <laughs> I would have been in a better place. So just with your concept of how we do things for other people, I realized mm -hmm. that even in my artistic career, I've been invested in being honest, a truthful voice, a voice for diversity, a voice for mm -hmm. people who don't have a voice, right? And empowering them, but never, ever listen to my own message. And all of these other people I've been affecting and helping, not once did I sit down and say, wait a minute, you need a little bit of this yourself. Mm hmm it was the simplest thing that evaded me for years that I actually could do myself some good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, that day was an amazing, revelatory day, changed the, tra the trajectory with how I dealt with myself. And I think for the very first time, I actually understood self-care for what it was. And it was a complete shift in lifestyle. It affected mm -hmm. the food I ate. Mm -hmm. It affected the time I ate the food. It affected my gym membership or <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof at that point, right? Yes. It changed so many things. And it's just it's a, it's just a beautiful place to be in. It absolutely is. And it doesn't happen automatically, right? No. And it didn't. <laughs> Right. It wasn't like, wow, overnight. Sometimes you wish you have that that Cinderella shoe, you know, that fairy godmother who comes in and changes everything. But what I've um, known as my own personal truth, right, <laughs> is even when, you know, the fairy godmother comes and turns the pumpkin into a coach and gives you the glass slipper, 12 o'clock will come. So oh, if you have not day, done your work, twice a day. <laughs> when, when, when midnight strikes, <laughs> you back to rats, a pumpkin, <laughs> <laughs> and you cleaning the floor, right? Yes, I'm yes. seriously, you've got this that, work has got to be lasting. <laughs> it does. And the other the other part about it is uh, to use uh, common parlance, you do have to level up with it. Because what worked for you five years ago is not going to work for you today because you're in a different place in your life, up or down. Right, right. You're in a different place. Right. So you have to reassess what works for you. Uh, you have to reassess what resources are available to you. That's the other piece about it that I don't think we've talked a little bit about is recognizing that no one person can do it all. That So we sometimes I'm always amazed when my clients come in or people that present for therapy about like uh, how you thought that was going to work out. Like when you say the things I had a client just recently tell me, wow, when I say it out loud, I see now how that would have never worked. And I say, exactly. That's <laughs> sometimes, funny. I mean, it's not funny, but it <laughs> it's is not funny. funny. It's like an ironic funny. <laughs> right. 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 And it was such a genuine, like, wow, did I, I really said that? I never, I never saw it that way. And I've been saying this for years. And that's what happens. We get used to doing things in a certain way. We hold on to dysfunctional behaviors. We continue to invest our energy in the wrong places and spaces and people and things. And we end up in a really bad place. And part of where where we go wrong is not being able to ask for help and not being able to leverage the resources that are available to us. So for me to speak personally, I, this has become, it, this has always been 
that this part has always been a challenge of mine. Always, always, always. I remember uh, talking with 